Well, one is that re- that rejection is part of the sales game. You have to accept it. Take a no. You, you got to be tough. Well, we discovered that rejection is triggered by certain things you say and do that causes the other person to push back on you. So rejection does not ever have to happen if you do it the right way. Please welcome to Bootstrap Podcast and the Osport Syndicate, Ari Galper. Thank you for your time, Hi. Ari. Thank you for having me, I appreciate it. Thank you so much. I got a lot of book coming from Elisa, so I'm just reading it. It's right. good. First question, can you tell us about yourself? Sure, I'm from the U.S. originally, originally from California, but I met my wife on the, on an online dating site 20 years ago, pre-swiping, and She's from Sydney, was working in Los Angeles, but actually met in California. And then came out here, got engaged and married. We've been here ever since for 20 years. I've been in Sydney now. So how did you start this trust? What, why is it more than the trust-based selling? How you started with this? Well, it started out where um, I had an experience 20 years ago as I was managing a sales team. And I had a conference call with an opportunity that was a big sale opportunity. And we agreed, they agreed to a conference call. We sold the technology back then. And um, my contact agreed to a, a webinar to show them what our product was. And I showed this to them on this live conference call and they loved it. They thought it was fantastic. And the call came to a close and my contact says to me, Ari, you know, we're really interested in this. Please can we call a couple weeks, follow up with us, we'll move this forward. I said, fantastic. And I, and as I'm reaching for the off button, the speakerphone, by accident, I hit the mute button instead and uh, not the off button. And a small click happened and they thought I hung up the phone. In a split second, I pulled my thumb back and uh, I said to myself, Ari, go to the dark side, listen in, you have nothing to lose. And so they started talking amongst themselves, thinking I had left the call. And as I listened in, what I heard was this. I heard, we're not going to go with him. Keep using it for more information and make sure we shop someplace else cheaper. Knife and heart twist. I was in a state of shock. And I hung up the phone, I looked at the wall and said to myself, what did I do wrong? I was competent, a professional. And the first big idea hit me, that was this, the somewhere along the way, it has become socially acceptable not to tell the truth to people who sell, right? It's okay to say things like, sounds good, send me information, I'm interested, follow up with me, but never buy anything. That was the first big wake up call. Then I realized at that moment that well, I asked myself, why were they afraid to just tell me the truth? I'd be okay with that. And I realized the reason why is there's a visible river of pressure that flows underneath every sales call you have with somebody. And if you don't take the pressure out of the process, what will happen is they'll keep their guard up, won't tell you the truth, and you'll keep chasing people. And that became my whole uh, revolution called Unlock the Game, where we have a whole new mindset now. We teach people how to let go of the sale and focus only on deep trust with people. And because I believe trust is a new currency. If you're selling over trust building, you're going to lose opportunities. That's really how this started 20 years ago, the whole revolution around trust-based selling. So for our listeners and audience right now, who is also uh, maybe starting up a business or being um, starting on their entrepreneur journey, how this trust-based selling will be incorporated with their business, say, they are not on retail, they are service-based. How yes. it will be incorporated? Well, this is for service-based, but it's for businesses that are low volume, high price point, high trust models, uh, longer sales cycles. And the nice thing about this, if you adopt this approach, it becomes your differentiation, your category of one, because if you start selling the way everyone else sells, what happens is you'll get commoditized, especially as an entrepreneur starting a new company. The last thing you want to do is be pigeonholed as a salesperson. You want to have a unique approach, a special, just like your offer is. So this trust-based approach, the way we teach it, is unique in itself because not many people are doing it because they're still conditioned to sell the old way. So a lot of people now is trying to build their own branding through online due to the pandemic. As, as number one authority on trust best selling, how, how do you build a strong online reputation? Well, the way you do it is you don't pitch yourself. Instead, your content and your positioning should be all about the problems that you help your market solve. Because most of us have been taught that branding is all about branding ourselves, our company, what we do, our services, but really trust-based marketing and selling is all about marketing 
the articulation of your market's problems. They feel that you understand and resonate with them and they feel connected to you because you're not pitching yourself. Instead, you're basically publicizing your ability to understand their market's problem. And that's what creates real trust with people when they resonate with you around their problems. So what is your biggest surprise you have in the last few months and why? Well, my, my, you know, it's not really a surprise, but I am constantly shocked by the fact that so many entrepreneurs and so many business owners are still wedded to the old way of selling. They still think sales is a numbers game. They still think the more contacts they make, the bigger networks they have, the more success they'll have. Well, we discovered that's not true anymore. The way the world's changed now, it's not about how many contacts you have anymore. It's about how deep you go on each conversation with people. And I've also been surprised by the fact that people still chase prospects. They believe the sale is made or lost at the end of the process at the close. And we believe and proven now the sale is not lost anymore at the end of the process. It's actually lost at the beginning at hello for many people. So you're saying now the type of sales tactic right now has to be have a value and benefit before sales. Well, yeah, and I'm not suggesting that you give away information. See, what happens is a lot of people do free education. They give value. They hope they give so much value that the customer is going to buy from them. And I tell my clients, stop giving value because everyone else is doing it. They don't need more value. What these what your market needs is, is clarity. Give them clarity on their issues so they feel you understand them more than anybody else. That's your differentiation over pitching and educating them on your solution. That's okay, Here's the thing. Your ideal client doesn't care about how you solve their problem. What they care about is if you're the one to solve it or not, which is a very different way of thinking from their point of view. Okay. So that's going to be going to be contradict to other, other people, other business consultants saying you have to put value, benefit before that. So that's, that's a mistake. Okay. So, on, on, on the other side of this, so being a trust-based sale, how would you help individual business owner who is starting up and doesn't know how to grow their business? Say online marketing, for example, online business. Well, there's a few strategic elements they have to sort out first before they can market themselves. One is they have to know who is their ideal client. Then they have to know what are the three to five core problems that they can solve for their ideal client. Then what they do is they take those core problems and they amplify those issues. And, the, and then they use that amplification, that content to market themselves online. They basically market themselves as what I call a trusted authority. Somebody who understands their market's problems. Right. So the market I serve are business owners and entrepreneurs who are chasing ghosts. Ghost means somebody who says, yes, I'm interested. Send me information. Uh, uh, let's move forward and never call you back. They're playing the numbers game. That's the market and problems that I solve. So every entrepreneur has to know what problems they solve, not rather than pitching what they're selling. This podcast is brought to you by Ospad Syndicate, powered by Kangaroo Fern Media Lab. Kangaroo Fern is Australia's independent video and podcast management agency with a mission to help individuals and entrepreneurs to start their own podcasts and harness the power of podcasting. Book now via www.kangaroofern.com. So you're saying you have to have as well a mentor in doing this if you're starting up in a business to be... Well, I recommend it if you want to take a shortcut to success you're better off finding somebody that can guide you to get there faster. If you want to take the S curves and take a long time and hit the wall a few times and then, then don't get any help. It's up to you, up to the person to choose that choice. Okay. So what was the one thing or a handful of things that really help you, your business take off? Well, the one thing that, that changed my life and my client's lives is, is my son, Toby, when he was born, after a day after he was born, we were told that he had Down syndrome. And I don't know if you know anybody who has Down, 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 has Down syndrome, but they're beautiful people. They have no hidden agenda. They're transparent. They're very loving. 
And um, he impressed, he, he's an amazing boy. And I wrote a book about him called Lessons from Toby. And he's impacted me so much that I took his way, view of the world of transparency and honesty and openness and put that into my process. And so far, he's been the driver of our business for 20 years. He's now, uh, well, he's now 18 years old soon, but for many, he's been really my inspiration that's grown my business for many, many years and kept me going uh, after two decades now to help people build trust with other people, just like he he does so well and so naturally. The lesson from Toby. Can you tell us about this book? Because I was reading all of the book that you sent to me. It's very wonderful about trust base, but this one is different. Yeah, so that's a book that I wrote and every page has a special saying on it. There's 365 pages in that book, one for every day of the year. And it came from his, I think, fourth birthday party when I observed him with other kids and how he was blending along, getting along with them so well. And he was such, he was just, they were just treating him so beautifully. And I wrote, I just felt inspired to write about him and, um, and end up with this little book called Lessons from Toby, How to Stay Centered in Personal Business Life. Uh, and he's still an inspiration to all to all of us, all my clients, and have that book. And um, it's 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 just like, look, I think he's the role model. He's how we need to become. We need to, all of us need to be more transparent, less fearful, more loving, more open with people, especially in sales. I mean, imagine one day if he goes into sales, how would he be? He'd be incredible because you couldn't help but to buy from him because he has no hidden agenda to make the sale. He just wants to help you, and that's our problem in selling is we don't we have a hard time doing that. Yeah, you're correct. So I got. I'm just gonna pick one, um, one quote in here on the book, and uh, tell me about this. All right. So I think this is number six. Look at the both sides of a situation completely. Can you explain to me that? Yeah, because I think many times we're so caught up in our own drama that we see the world at 180 degrees, the way we want to see it. But you got to expand your thinking to 360 degrees. You got to be able to see all the options and all the choices. So you, you know, you're centered, you stay present, you make the right decision for yourself, just like he does. All right. Fantastic for that. So what's one thing you learn about yourself during this uh, pandemic? That I have to be more of a doctor with my potential clients and prospects. I have to diagnose their problem. I'm the doctor of the patient. I really adopted that that whole metaphor over the last 12 months, this whole doctor-patient relationship model, where when I when when you meet with someone for the first time with a potential client, your goal is not to sell them something, your goal is to diagnose their problem. So uh, the whole doctor uh, analogy has been part of my business for, for, for a while now, and all my clients love it. And it's very much how we operate, like physicians, not salespeople. Who are the three people who has been, say, most influential to you, Ari? I know there's a picture at the back. It's uh, Richard Branson. <laughs> He's number one. I met him a couple of years ago back here. I was a very nice guy. Great to meet him. And he, he left me with some interesting insights about uh, how to uh, let go of your own thinking and, and think bigger. And then there's my grandmother as well. She's 101 years old. She passed away uh, recently. She had her own business as well. She had, and she was the same thinking and also um one of my mentors perry marshall i've i think I've, I've he's impacted me quite a bit over the years from his book called 80 20 sales and marketing all right thank you so much so what is your let's say what skill do you look for in in a mentee or someone you like to work under you well i i coach a lot of performers high performers uh, entrepreneurs, business owners, consultants, advisors, and the ones who I enjoy working the most, who are most successful with me, are the ones who are most open. The ones who don't fight the change, the ones who want to learn, the ones who are humble, and the ones who realize they need they need to start again and they need to build trust from the beginning and the ground up. If they come in with preconceived notions, they know everything, then it's not going to work out. What do you think is what do you think gets in the way of entrepreneurs being more successful? Their mindset, their, their imposter syndrome, their subconscious voices saying, I'm not worthy. How can I become successful? How will I ever make it past this issue I have right now? It's just self-limiting beliefs. And I work a lot with my clients on breaking that open to create what I call a quantum leap with them, where they can see themselves in a much bigger place a lot quicker.
So you saying is imposter syndrome. You've been you've been successful on your company and your business. How did you still in, experience in imposter syndrome and how you? Yeah, I had, at first I was intimidated by other people around me. Sure, ones who are more successful, and who am I to to be successful? And and then I chipped away at that for a long time until I finally said to myself, I've got a superpower no one else has. And everyone else has a superpower. They have to find it and articulate it. And I help people do that as well. So what keeps you inspired and motivated day to day every time you wake up in the in the morning? Well, the fact there's so many entrepreneurs struggling with the same problem. And they just seem to, to never, not really shake it until I get a hold of them. And I got to really force it out of them to stop selling the old way and stop jumping on their calls quickly and offering their, their offer too quickly and slow them down and really shift their thinking. That motivates me. So what advice would you give someone, say, wanting to pursue a career similar to, to you right now? I would say you're going to have to really get clear on, on, on the problems you help your clients solve. Because if you're confused about that or you're explaining it from your product point of view, then you're, you're, you don't have enough clarity yet. Clarity is everything. I was so curious about the book, Unlock the Sales Game. How did you concept conceptualize the name? Well, I wanted to express what I'm doing, which is breaking the mold, being contrarian, going against the grain, doing the opposite of everyone else in the sales industry who's just playing the game. I want to unlock the game and, and get the truth to people. So on the book, you you also discuss about the scripting. So the scripting should be uh, different from the normal traditional. But on today's time, do you think the script is still very important and sales base? I don't think you need scripting at all. What you need is tr- what I call trust-based languaging. It's different. In that book, you know, there's some phraseology in there, some languaging in there that replaces scripting. Our typical sales words, like for instance, I, I, I'll ask your listeners right now to never again use the phrase follow-up ever again in their career. That's a sales word. Never use that word ever again. It's the worst word to ever say to somebody. Hi, I'm giving you a call to follow up. You know, they're thinking, they're thinking all you care about is your sale. That's a huge mistake. Instead, you want to say this. I'm giving you a call to see if you have any feedback on our previous conversation. Any feedback on last meeting. Feedback's going backwards on towards a sale. So I've got a whole body of work that replaces scripting and typical sales languaging around our own trust-based languaging. That's great. So who do you think of when you hear the word successful? What do I mean? By, what do I think about that? I think the term is freedom, uh, financial freedom to have the time to do what you want. I think all of us are working towards that, might have achieve, us achieve that, to have the freedom to explore our, our, our potential. What is the one common, say, myth about your profession or field that you want to debunk? Well, one is that re- that rejection is part of the sales game. You have to accept it. Take a no. You, you got to be tough. Well, we discovered that rejection is triggered by certain things you say and do that causes the other person to push back on you. So rejection does not ever have to happen if you do it the right way. All right. Thank you so much. Before we wrapping up, so if you had a billboard to write one short piece of advice to our listeners and audience, what would you say to them? Stop selling. Build trust instead, and you'll be more successful. All right. Thank you so much for that, Ari. How can our listener and audience connect with you? Best place is to go to unlockthegame.com, just like it sounds. Unlockthegame.com. There's a free intro course there. My book is there. We also offer a complimentary coaching session as well. Uh, and with no sales pitch from us, as you know, we don't do that. And also, I have a show I do once a month on LinkedIn called Stump the Guru. We can jump on, on StreamYard and ask me a question and try and stop me with your toughest sales challenge you've got. So say hello to me on LinkedIn, connect with me, and we'll, we'll go from there. All right. Thank you so much, Harry. And thank you for your time. And um, have a good night. Be well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. This is another episode of the Bootstrap Podcast under Osports Syndicate. See you again. See you. Bye. This podcast is brought to you by Ospad Syndicate, powered by Kangaroo Fern Media Lab. 
Kangaroo Fern is Australia's independent video and podcast management agency with a mission to help individuals and entrepreneurs to start their own podcast and harness the power of podcasting. Book now via www.kangaroofern.com.